name is Sam. I'm a militia member. Now, some of you that, some, some may be offended by that. Some may have mixed feelings about what I just said. Some people may cast me in a uh, negative light because of uh, the statement I made. But I want to talk to you about being a militia member. Being a militia member isn't something that uh, um, the media has portrayed it to be. We all know in America that the media is very biased. Um, they're there to make money. They're there to sell a story. They have a product. News is a product. And only certain news, unfortunately, sells. And ratings equates money. And money equates profit. And profit equates good business. So our media is biased in what they produce. And a lot of people like to see that there's bad factions out there. That, and there's, there's bad of everything. There's bad school teachers. There's great school teachers. There's bad, there's bad law enforcement. There's good law enforcement. There's good politicians. There's bad politicians. And unfortunately, yes, there's some bad militia out there. But I want to talk about militia today. Because we are grossly misunderstood among our peers here in America. And because of our nature of not uh, speaking out about ourselves, we are misunderstood even more. So, I want to take this, and, and this is not a, a recruitment video whatsoever. This is an educational video. This is to educate those who would watch this video about what a militia really is, how they operate, and what they are there for, and what they were designed to do. So, let's start with the question, what is a militia? Well, militia was was formed as a state guard or like uh, our National Guard. Our, our National Guard actually used to be the state militia, but it was federalized many, many decades ago and became a federal guard. So uh, even though it operates in every state, it is regulated by the federal government. There are still 22 states, however, who have a, their own state guard, which is still in operation. That's 22. Almost half of our states have a, uh, a state guard which once the National Guard went federalized they kept a state guard for their local protection. And there's, there's infantry elements, naval, and also air elements intermingled in these 22 states. So, and they're often considered like the National Guard Reserve. The reserve to the reserve, if you will. Um, but a militia is nothing more than a lawful, I want to make sure I point that out, a lawful organization that is founded both in the federal constitution and most state constitutions. Okay, I reside in the state of Tennessee. We have in our constitution two articles that talk about militia and in one article two sections and so we have a legal basis to have a militia in Tennessee okay so what is a militia a militia is a group of people who volunteer to put themselves into service for their state their region and their community okay Volunteer. Get that in your mind. Militias are volunteers. Nobody twists anybody's arm to be a part of them. Nobody, uh, nobody goes out and recruits and uses intimidation or anything like that to, to recruit. That's not what we want. Anyone who joins up with a training militia does so of their own volition. They, they do it because they want to. Now, let me tell you about the militia in Tennessee. The Constitution says that every able-bodied man, now woman, every able-bodied able person is in fact, indeed, already because of their their citizenship here in Tennessee, being a resident of Tennessee, they are by Constitution a militia member. I'll repeat that. In Tennessee, if you're an able-bodied citizen of the state, you are considered by the Constitution 
a member of the Tennessee's militia. Now, that may, that may catch a lot of people off guard, uh, that they are actually a part of the state militia. Yes, you are, if you're in Tennessee and you're able-bodied. So, all states have militia. If you do a, a, a Google search, you will find that all states have militia. Every single state in our nation has militias in them. 22, like I said earlier, has active state guards, which are just basically active militias. So, what we've covered what a militia is. What is a militia not? Well, let me tell you. A militia is not anything that is illegal. If there's illegal activity happening in any group, they are no longer a lawful militia. They are an unlawful group. Um, and whether they are unlawful in the area of crime or unlawful in the area uh, of race, Whatever it may be, um, they do not fit the, the government's criteria of a militia, and therefore they are not a lawful militia. And so they are just a group. And not necessarily would I like to hear them or see them called militia, because that puts a bad uh, picture, one that the media would love to get a hold of, to portray every one of us in that light. And that's just not the case. 99% or greater of your people out there who are in militias are wonderful, excellent citizens of our United States. Now, a militia does not do anything illegal. If they're doing something illegal, knowingly illegal, then they're not a militia and they're not protected by the law. They're criminals. However, I want you to know that a lot of people think some of the activities that militias conduct are illegal when they are, in fact, very legal. I'll say that again. A lot of people think that some of the activities that militias conduct are illegal. That's not the case. Assembling together with rifles out on somebody's farm to train is not illegal. Okay, so there's a lot of misconception there. So we want to make sure that we're doing everything that is, that is law-abiding. Okay, what does militias do? Okay, we stand as a group of individuals, grouped together, ready for the defense and common good of our state, our counties, our communities, and our families. We stand to serve and the head of the militias in Tennessee and every state is the governor of that state. The elected governor of that state is the head of all militias. Now, the governor may not take leadership of those militias until there's a need that arises by which he calls the militias to active duty. Okay? So, what do we do? We train. We have a lot of law enforcement people in the community. We have a lot of ex-military people in the communities. These militias all across the America, they're natural outlets for people who have served and want to continue to serve. So once their career may be over due to injury or age, a lot of times they'll find themselves in a militia helping train those who have no prior service or no, no history of service for their community. So they make excellent trainers and they make excellent uh, characters by which the, the standard of law-abiding patriots are held. So we train. We train just like um, the National Guard might train. We train with... Uh, personal weapons, we train with hand-to-hand uh, -hand techniques, we train to survive in an extended period of time away from, from family, we train to 
survive in the woods. We train to survive uh, in a uh, crisis situation where there's no power or no clean water. Uh, so there's a lot of various things that we train to do. And this training is helpful to the families. Um, a lot of families had no idea what they would do if there was ever a natural emergency where they lost power, water, and had to do without food for, for several days or even into a few weeks. Um, a lot of mil militias have several uh, good trainers that is skilled in camp craft, bush craft, fire craft, survival, prepper, all these different various skills that uh, the members come from all walks of life. Hunters, fishermen, uh, lawyers, doctors, EMTs. We just have a, a just a myriad of people that come into these militias and they offer what they do in civilian life. They offer that to the group and they help cross train one another. And so we have a lot of training that we do. Um, we learn we learn how to uh, save food, how, learn how to purify water, just simple survival skills that can help us in every day. Well, we also teach people how to use their weapons. A lot of people own weapons. They bought them for security purposes to defend their homes, but they've never had a formal training in how to use these weapons. Well, a lot of militias have National Rifle Association certified instructors so that they can help teach uh, a lot of these uh, soccer moms how to shoot the pistol they bought for their home security and defending their family. So, and a lot, a lot of gentlemen have these firearms as well and had no formal training. Well, a lot of this training comes into play when these people sign up and join with a militia, then the militia helps train them and prepare them to defend their homes, defend their families, and if need be, defend their, their state. So, militias are a good thing. And like I said, remember this, that every able-bodied person in this state is considered by the Constitution a militia member. So, um, whether you get out and train, whether you get out and wear a uniform and bond together with some people in your area and learn to rely on one another and share one another's uh, giftings and share one another's talents and teach what you know to other people and learn what they know, whether you group yourself with those people and you, you miss out on that camaraderie or not, uh, you still are, by the state of Tennessee, considered a militiaman if you're able-bodied. So, why should you get involved? Well, if you're like me and you have a family, there's skills that I need that may may need to I may need to help protect my family, and I'm there's skills that I need that I may need to help for my family's survival in a crisis situation. Um, we just don't know what's going to happen. No, we just had. Uh, fires raged through East Tennessee just not too long ago and it, it really did a lot of damage to a, a local community and several people were displaced, several businesses were closed down and that was a survival situation. Some people there in that part of East Tennessee, um, they were without food, they were without water and they were without housing. Now East Tennessee is a great place to live and People pulled together and set up shelters and was able to get the majority of those people something to drink and a place to sleep and food to eat in a relatively short period of time. However, we've got some super volcanoes out west. If uh, Yellowstone or the one in Southern California where it's happened to, to blow, um, it could have a, a lasting effect that may last, may last for weeks or months and could be very detrimental to, to life uh, in and around those areas and even extended uh, through the jet stream as uh, it moves toward the eastern United States and the ash in the air. So these skills that we teach and that we learn are, are very helpful. Um, so why should you get involved? Well, just simple question. Wouldn't you like to have a network of friends that you can count on if things get tough? I think the simple answer to that for everyone would be yes. And you may have that in place, or you may think you have that in place now, and if you do, uh, kudos to you, but not everybody has that. So a militia is a good outlet and a good uh, 
community for those people to belong to. Um, where can you find militias? You know, militias by nature are kind of secretive. Um, they don't want everybody seeing what they do because a lot of the public just has a, a bad perception of what they do. And so it wouldn't matter. Um, it was not too long ago we had a, a formation and uh, we were out front of a, a building because it was inclement weather. We weren't out uh, in the field training as normal and people were slowing down because here's a, a group of uh, individuals, men and women, um, with firearms, standing in formation, saluting the American flag. Now, a lot of them probably perceived that we were a military force, uh, maybe National Guard, but having seen some of the beards on some of the chins, it's quickly, it's, uh, you quickly recognize, well, that's not, that's not the National Guard. That must be a militia. Um, and so I wanted to tell you that you can look for those groups. You know, they are kind of clandestine. They don't uh, stick out and purposely. We don't try to, to go around boastfully, look at us. Um, that's the wrong approach to anything. But you can find them on Google. You can find them on Facebook. You can find them just by asking around. And, and I want you to know that everybody should get involved if your health allows it, you should get involved with uh, some sort of uh, militia group, some sort of group that serves the community. No matter what it is, you should be serving your community as a, a patriot, as a citizen, as a good, responsible uh, adult. You should serve your community in some capacity. Uh, militia is a good outlet for that. Um, what should you expect from a group once you find them? Well, you generally, um, you'll go through some sort of screening process because militias just don't let anybody in. I mean, they have to make sure that they're above reproach. They do not want some radical, rebellious, gonna go shoot up uh, the town type of person in their ranks. Um, that would be detri uh, detrimental to the group and it would be sending out the wrong message of what they are about. So, you will probably go through some sort of screening or vetting process to make sure that you have no criminal background, uh, that you're not a felon, and that uh, you're a productive citizen, a moral citizen, and one who believes in the Constitution, one who believes in our state constitution and one that supports our government, um, one who is not uh, trying to usurp authority, but one who lines up with it. Um, and so once you find them, you'll go through this process. And once you've gone through this process, then you will probably end up being invited to one of the training um, days that they hold. Um, some militias train weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, uh, quarterly. Some do online training, some do video training, some do meet at Farmer John's house and we'll all go out and do a little training. But there's training going to be involved. And uh, once you find the group, and once you're uh, admitted to the group, then there's some things you should look for in the group. Are they being lawful? If you can see no unlawful conduct, that's good. You see anything that is unlawful or even in a gray area of unlawful, you just need to leave that group. Um, the bottom line is you have to protect yourself even when you're endeavoring to learn to protect your family, your community, and your state. Um, so if you sign on with a group and they end up being uh, a bunch of radicals that just want to fight and drink and party and well that's probably your cue to to keep keep your search going um, but you won't find many of those um, there are a few out there like I first stated there's there's good and bad in every group but you won't find many in the militias uh, militias tend to police themselves because we want to stay 
above reproach so that we can continue our training and continue our preparations. So, once you find them, know what to look for, know what to expect from a group, and if they don't meet your expectations, you're a volunteer, just leave. So what's the average militia member look like? Well, you see me, I've got a gray hair, I'm an ex-Marine, been in law enforcement, I'm not overly thin, not overly tall. I blend into a crowd pretty well. Um, but your average militia member, there is no way to tell him or her from any other citizen. We got them in their 20s, in the teens. We got them in our mid-ages, and we got them in uh, almost our seniors. Uh, some of our militia members are... Uh, approaching that uh, retirement age. So, you can't go on what an average militia member looks like. But there is something you can go on that will meet the criteria what does an average militia member act like. The average militia member acts like this. They're patriotic. They're respectful. They're tactful. They're helpful. They are servants. They, they, they pride themselves on being the type of person, the caliber of person that serves others. I'm not talking from a degrading point. I'm talking from a heart point. Their heart is about serving. A lot of the militia members, like I said, are ex-military, ex-law enforcement, involved in the medical community. Their heart is in serving others. This is why they stand up when others won't. This is why they take up arms and train with them when others won't. So, you'll find a really high caliber person, and that's what the average militia members act like. They're patriotic. They love their country. Most of them are good, Bible-believing Christian people. Um, they're very, on the average, very religious, very conscious about other people's perception, the way other people feel. They're really good people. And the one thing that may surprise you if you are watching this is the amount of families involved in the militia. There are a lot of families that are involved in being a part of a militia. A lot of husband and wives, a lot of husband, wives, and young adult children or teen children. You'd be surprised just what you find. So I hope this has given you an overview of what a militia is kind of what we're about, the legal aspect of our existence. We are a constitutional body, lawful body of men and women and young adults who have decided voluntarily to serve. If it's something you think you might be interested in, there's, there's ways for you to find a local militia where you live. If you're here in Tennessee, you can always just Google it or you can search on Facebook and you'll run across a few. And you may run across one that's in your neck of the woods. Look them up. Give them a shout. Get together and talk with a couple of their members and see if you're not compelled become part of something greater than yourself, something that is awesome, and something that is legal, and hopefully never will be needed, but something that is there to stand in the gap for you, your family, for your community, and for the great state of Tennessee. I am Sam, and I want to thank you for watching this video. Again, I'm not trying to recruit you. I did not mention the, the militia I'm a part of. 
I did not mention any specific militias. This is not a recruitment video. It's educational. And I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching. You have a blessed day.